Look at that just lifting off. How much neater do those nails look? You're annoying, you know that, don't you? Tired. Why do I look like Morticia? I mean, look pale. It's because you're tired. Oh, babe, you're so the sweetest things to me. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another video from Natasha Lee and after you all requested it, I've brought my happy hubby, Rick, back. Hmm. Do I say hi, Rick? Hmm. <laughs> you don't just grunt, you look at the camera and say hi. Hello. <laughs> he just went down about two octaves. Hello. And I am bringing you the one dollar nail art videos, but because time with Rick, not in work and without the kids is limited, I've grabbed him today because he's off so I can show you the male money that you've all been requesting. Woohoo. Lucky you, babe. So here we have Rick's hand twitch. Actually, do you know... Can they're all some bloody hands. That's what they are. Look at them. Fine and specimen. So it begins. <laughs> they are, aren't you? You should be grateful to hold my hands. They're awesome hands. Rick's hands and nails aren't bad. Awesome. Wouldn't go quite so far as to say awesome, but not bad. He does actually have a nice shape as well. He's got pretty long nail beds here, if you have a look. Nice long nail bed. You can actually see, which is quite unusual, the lunula on every single finger. So in the 20s, babe, you'd have been rocking the mani because that was well on trend. So we do see we've got a few hangnails here. And for this method, I'm going to show you the salon safe method for doing this, but you can do this at home on your other half. Or if you just want to do it on yourself, you can take away all the skills and knowledge. Why are you staring at me like that? <laughs> I'm trying to look above you, and if I look at you, I make you laugh. Look down or something. Well, I can't look down, can I? No, I don't mean look at my chest. <laughs> you want me to look? I said this would take half an hour. <laughs> and to begin with, we are going to anti-back. My hands are clean. I don't know where they've been, do I? Have I followed you around with them? Yeah, no. Well, just come out of the shower, haven't I? No, you've been numerous places since you've been out of the shower. I haven't. You could have touched anything, scratched anything. But I haven't, though, have I? Oh, I don't know that, do I? Oh, smell! <laughs> I don't know. Thank you, darling. If I was in a salon, I would be wearing gloves, and the way it's going with hubby, I think I might actually stick them on. Right, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stick a dot on the towel so you know where your finger should be. See that? That's about, that's the middle of the screen. Are you doing a love heart, babe? No, it's Illuminati. Ah, oh, Illuminati. Mm. Do, 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 do. X Files tune. That's nothing like X Files. Well, that's how it starts. So, after anti backing, I am going to begin by filing. So, when you're filing the natural nail, always take a 240 grit file. The one I'm using is 240 on one side and 1200 on the other. And the 1200 is more for buffing. And the other thing to say, if you have a really good quality file, it doesn't matter if you go backwards and forwards, it won't cause any problems. If you have poor quality rough files or you use something above a two, uh, 240 grit, going backwards and forwards tears the nail plate layers, makes them separate and causes chipping and peeling. If the nails are too long to file to start with, then we're going to clip them. And when you're clipping nails, it's best to go from one side and then the other. Mama finger. <laughs> you do remember that I'm qualified, don't you? Yeah, I know. It's been about 35 years since I had somebody cut my fingernails. Has it? Yeah. Oh, this should be nostalgic for you, honey. And then file. And I prefer to follow the natural. <laughs> What's wrong with you? You're not sanded a piece of wood. You don't like it, do you? No. <laughs> it's like rubbing your fingers up and down a blackboard. It makes me feel funny. <laughs> Could have warned me before we decided. I didn't know. I've never found my nails before, have I? <laughs> On. I can't watch. You're flinching. Yeah, with... well, it's nervous when you when we doing that. What am I going to do? What? What am I going to do Take with it? Take a chunk out the end of my finger. <laughs> it's like sucking lemons. <laughs> Is yeah. that from when you dropped that? No, that's when my dad dropped the chest of drawers on my finger and left. Welcome to the Lee family. Now, just to point out, because we had some damage on this nail, which now Rick always gets this level of separation here. If it doesn't cause you any problems, fine. It's quite common if someone's had an injury on their finger. Quite often when you've got uh, mechanics, you tend to see it quite a lot when they've whacked their finger between bits of a car. 
If it's not causing you problems, you can leave it. If, however, every time it grows, it catches on something, very lightly with the 240 side of the file, I would say just to buff, to make sure that it's blended in. Then I'm turning it on to the 1200 side. I'm going to smooth it down more. You could actually even apply a little line of glue over that and then buff it so it's dull. But as long as it's not catching, that's nice and even now then it's safe. Once you've clipped the nails, pop your clippers into the disinfectant. I like to use Mundo, it's a hospital grade disinfectant. And I don't know where my husband's been, so it's safer. <laughs> I'm gonna do cuticles now, I'm gonna do two different methods. One is dry cuticle work, and the other is using a cuticle remover. And this one from Essie is currently my favorite. And what I'll do is I'll pick these two fingers to do it on because this one's got quite a few hangnails, so we'll deal with that separately and I'll show you how to deal with hangnails. But I'm going to show you the difference between a dry and a wet cuticle work. Now ideally, really, if someone hasn't had a manicure before and you are looking at hands that don't tend to be moisturized, you really want to do a wet one. It's gonna take a lot of the hard work out of it. So on the wet one, I'm going to apply the cuticle remover. I'm not actually touching the nozzle to the finger and that prevents cross-contamination if you are doing this in a salon environment. What are you doing with that? Chill your pants, babe. There you go, that's okay, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. I just... What? Does it hurt? No! Why are you gasping then? Because it looks big and painful. <laughs> what I'm doing here is I'm going to show you cuticle. And what I'm going to do is zoom in a bit closer here. I'm going to show you what cuticle actually is. This here, this ridge of skin, all the way around the nail. I'm not doing... It, no, it sends funny feelings down to my feet. <laughs> Are you for real? Yeah, crack on. This here, this ridge of skin all the way around here is your epinicium. It goes up to your side wall or your lateral fold, but it's actually living tissue should never ever be cut. This here, that you can see me pushing and moving here, and it's flaking up, that is cuticle and that's what we want to remove. So when we talk about removing cuticle, you can see all of that there is cuticle. And what cuticle is basically, when the nail forms, this area of whiteness here is like a little reservoir. It's a pouch of white keratin gel. When the nail forms, the gel is pushed through a very thin slit and the moisture comes out. And what happens is when it's formed, along the top here as it's being pushed out and becomes the nail, skin attaches to the top of that nail and that's what cuticle is. So cuticle is just dead skin that's attached to the nail. I will zoom out a little bit here for you and then I'm gonna show you dry money. I'm starting with a hoof stick. <laughs> Don't. A hoof stick? Yes, darling, a hoof stick. A hoof? Hoof. Like a horse's hoof. Because the shape of it, because it's curved. Oh, okay. And all I'm doing here, I'm not being rough. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Is it just... I don't know what about this hand, but it's like up and down a blackboard feeling. I'm pushing back here and loosening that cuticle or that non-living tissue off the nail. Go down those side walls a bit. Don't force back the side walls, but you can see you normally have a bit of give on them. So just go down the sides. And you can see that's loosened it a lot. I like then to go in with my curette. And if you are interested in any of the products I'm using, I will put links to the exact products or as close as I can get for you in the description down below. And then I'm very lightly just going back and forth. Look at all this coming off. This is all cuticle. If you do your nails regularly, you won't see cuticle like this, but this is nails that aren't done very often. This method of cuticle removal applies to men and women, people who are gonna go on to have gel polish or nail polish afterwards. Do not force back that epinicium or the side walls. You do not want to force back the living tissue. That's what creates a barrier to stop infection. It's almost like a proper educational video, isn't it, babe? Yeah, I'm learning something here. And then I'm going to take a nail brush just to remove some of this excess so I can see where I'm up to. So we can see the still bit of cuticle there. And that is where I would take my cuticle nips. What are you doing now? Removing your cuticle. It's non-living tissue, you won't feel it. Now we're gonna go on to the wet money. So I've let the cuticle remover soak there. This will make it a lot easier. I like to get a pad out ready next to me. Again, with the hoof stick. Look at that just lifting off that 
that gungy gloopy stuff is all cuticle and this is why I say if you can use a cuticle remover it is much easier look at all that I'm literally just stroking that hoof stick over the top of the nail I'm not digging it in at an angle I'm keeping so that tip for just turn your finger hand to the side for me love if I can just show you there what I'm actually doing is don't go up like that if you go too flat it's not going to work you're just going to be going over the side and you don't want to jab the epinicium. Very slight angle and just like that. Now once I've used the hoof stick and going back in with the curette and you can see the rest of it coming off so easily. Look at all that. That is all cuticle and again don't force back those side walls but just make sure you get down the sides a little bit and get rid of that cuticle. So here we have the dry mani and the wet and you can see it's a bit of a difference now when you have applied this cuticle remover the important thing to remember is to deactivate it and for that we need water and you need to deactivate it otherwise it keeps working and they tend to contain I think it's sodium hydroxide if you don't deactivate it with water it will carry on working and it can cause burns so we are going to now apply the cuticle remover to the rest of the nails let's see how much extra we get off from the nail that we did the dry money on yeah, yeah does make a difference doing a wet money you have the most beautiful hands in the railway darling by the time we're finished I've already had the most beautiful hands on the railway <coughs> Now the best trick here is when you've got the hangnail where you want it, squeeze, release, don't pull away, don't squeeze and then pull away, squeeze, release, because if you pull away that's when you can tear the skin and lead to bleeding. So I'm just getting my blade off my nips right under, squeeze, release, and if it's not got the first time, go again, squeeze, release. There we go. So there's quite a few around here. We can see there's one on the edge there, a few here. It's best to get these because if the skin goes dry, it um, it can then actually pull or someone might be inclined to pull at them or nibble them. Okay, so we've done all the cuticle nips. We've got a few bits still showing up, but that's fine. If you've got a gentleman that's got tougher epinicums, now Rick actually has got very gentle epinicums, and his, if I just zoom in here, are quite fine. In fact, I think they're probably thinner than my ones are. If you've got someone that's got thicker ones and they're growing up the nail, don't try and force them back. It can cause infection. What I'd say to that person, every time they get out of the bath or the shower, use the towel to gently rub back. And what will happen is with the use of some moisturiser and oil and rubbing back, they will push back naturally and shrink. So the other thing as well, the surface of Rick's nails is quite even except for on his thumb, which we can see some ridges and things like that. They're not too bad. Some people are self-conscious about these. So what I would say is it's not something to be done hugely regularly, but you can very lightly buff to reduce the appearance. And also it gives a nice healthy look to the nails. If they've got staining on the nails and you can't remove it with acetone, then I'd say again, a very light buff and it would only be a 1200. You can see it's really smooth because we don't want these, or generally we don't want these nails to be too shiny. I'm assuming you don't want super glossy nails, babe. No. I'm more than happy to oblige. Okay. And I'm just going in with that 1200. Then you can go in with a nice buffer. I'm just going to use the 2400 side, which is a very, very slight amount of texture to it. And then if you want to finish it off with the 4000 size, you can, but as you can see, it will buff up to a very high shine. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want your nails super shiny, babe? No. Okay. So for that, I am just going to take it down a little bit with the 2400. And when we oil, it just gives, you can see, it still looks like that nail, but it just removes some of those ridges and makes it look a bit more even. But you don't want to do this too much because when you're actually removing the ridges, what you're actually doing is thinning the nail. You're taking the ridges off, you're thinning that nail. You want to just do it enough, and that's why I'm using such a low grade of file. It's actually a buffing block, this one. See there, it's got a sheen. It's more of a sateen sheen. 
Okay, we are now ready to go into our final stage, which would be the cuticle oil and moisturizing. Now, really, if you're in a salon, I recommend using a cuticle oil in a dropper bottle because you can stop cross-contamination then. And what I mean by cross-contamination is whatever's in this dropper, I can raise above the nail, put a drop onto the nail and nothing touches. So you can use it between clients and then just massage in, which we'll do in a moment. However, I do actually prefer this cuticle oil at the moment from Bliss Kiss. And because it's my husband, I'm going to use it on him. I just prefer the way it soaks in. And then we're gonna massage it in. Don't forget to go under that nail edge because when you're applying your cuticle oil, get under the nail edge, especially if you have free edge and you're wanting those nails to stop peeling at the ends or splitting because underneath is where we can hold soap residue and they just lose a lot of the moisture and things like that through there. At the moment it's quite shiny, but we don't have to worry about that. We'll deal with that in a moment. And then I'm going to apply some moisturizer now. This one comes highly, highly recommended. It's a little bit weird though, isn't it? I bought this one for Rick because it had such great reviews and because his hands really badly chap in the winter. But jewelry's still out on it, it's pretty good. I'm rubbing that between my hands. And again, I had quite a few male clients in my salon. Generally, if you are confident in what you do in a salon, it makes a man feel much more comfortable having his nails done by you. So it really isn't something to be nervous of. It's something especially that men are getting and wanting done a lot more often now. People notice the appearance, especially in business meetings, shaking hands and things like that. Guys tend to notice it and feel a bit more self-conscious, but because of that masculinity thing, they don't like to say anything about it. So if you don't want to go to a salon to get a male money done, you can do all of this stuff to yourself. So if you've got a gentleman that doesn't want too much moisturizer on his hands, I would say after you've applied your cuticle oil, just take a clean pad and wipe over. If you're doing this for yourself at home, I would say leave the moisturizer on the cuticle oil as long as you possibly can. Make sure you take it down between the fingers here because this is where you can get the dry skin and you notice it. And we can see what a difference that has made. And we're just applying the cuticle oil a couple of times here with that hangnail being taken off, it won't be getting caught. That redness will go and disappear. How much neater do those nails look? So I hope this has been helpful for you. Thank you very much for requesting it. Rick and I are very tired. He's not quite on his full sarcastic form today, are you babe? Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm still trying to persuade him to let me do acrylic nails. I want to film him afterwards to see if he can do stuff with them. Like, make a cup of tea. I won't be able to do that. You reckon you'd be able to make a cup of tea? Definitely. You reckon? Yeah. Do you reckon you'd be able to empty a bin? A man of many talents now, I could do all that. We need you to prove it. On one leg. Okay, leave a comment down below if you want Rick to have, um, like, really nice long almond or stiletto acrylic nails. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. I will be bringing you the rest of the $1 nail art. You're staring at me. It freaks me out when you Sorry. do that. Don't forget the, the bell and the ding. And... Go on then. No. Go on, you're regular now. No. Go on. No, I told you. Go on. That. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video. Leave a happy face for Rick to encourage him to, oh yeah, smile. <laughs> <laughs> And if you really enjoy my channel, please subscribe and click that bell icon to be notified of every time I upload a video. You're still staring at me, it's freaking me out. And if you can think of some other ways I can do stuff to Rick to bring him into the videos, then let me know. Otherwise, please let me know what you would like to see again. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs>